Lord Jesus, glory to God. How good it is to glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like to greet the brethren with the peace of the Lord, the ones who are watching us uh, through Zoom and to YouTube, the peace of the Lord. Those who can, I'd like to invite you to open the Bible in the book of Acts, New Testament. We're going to read a couple of verses of chapter 4. Book of Acts. Chapter 4, and we're going to begin from verse 7. We're going to read from 7 to 12, and then we're going to skip to verse 18. Just a couple of verses. Thus says the Word of God, Acts chapter 4, verse 7, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man stands here before you whole. This is a stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there a salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now verse 18, so they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we ask you that your word can come into the encounter of each one that is here. And we ask you that you can complete the blessing that you have prepared for each one of us in the service and the ones that are watching us through the media. We pray thank, thankfully for the praises, for your presence, for your Holy Spirit among us. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. The text that we just read happens in the moment right after a very known passage which is the man that was healed it was by the door the the, the, the beauty when Peter and John approach and say we have no gold nor silver but what we have we give to you stand up in the name of Jesus of Nazareth and that miracle when Jesus bring that blessing to that man there was a great surprise and a great blessing for the ones that watched and witnessed it. Because all that entered through that door knew him. He was there every day. And suddenly, someone come. And after the Bible says he was jumping of joy, giving glory to God. So when he was asked what happened, and he testified, asked those two men, Peter and John, and they naturally said, we did that in the name of Jesus. We didn't do anything. Jesus did. So the word of God says that many believed in Jesus back then. At the same time, that incident brought a lot of steer among the, the, the most important high priests and the, the religious men 
from that period, they wanted that to be interrupted because Jesus was crucified and resurrected. They don't, they don't want that to spread. So the Bible says that Peter and John spent the night at the prison because of that. And in the text that we just read, they asked, in the name of whom and which power can you tell us how you accomplished this? Who gave you authority to do that? So Peter starts to explain. So brethren, <clears throat> during the, the journey of the faithful church, there was always ob obstacles to dismantle what God has done, is doing, and will do for the mankind. <clears throat> But so we can be attached to what the project of God for tonight to understand the world want to destroy what God has established for man the plan from God yesterday during the message pastor used that expression many churches who closed during the pandemics Why? Because of a virus, something invisible was capable to make like uh, a scratch into the Christianity around the world. And we can be here like all night long mentioning all the excuses that the mankind can uh, approach and, and present to stop serving God. But tonight, based on what the Lord has shown us, We, we are not going to do that. What we're going to do is the, the, the wonders that God has done in the life of the servants. I'll, say, I'll tell what He has done in my life and he, what He's doing in your life as a church. Braden, the stone was rejected for many. The mankind has His plans, desires, dreams, The blueprint of his life is in his mind, for his life, for his family, everything according to what he thinks is good, step by step. But many times the man fails because he forgets the most important detail. He forgets the cornerstone. And the Lord has shown tonight a man. He is here or he is watching us. And he is about to build a construction. He, he had a land. And he has the blueprint. And in the middle of the land there is a, a rock. And in his mind and his vision. Horizontally thinking. That stone is a problem. It's an obstacle. I'm not good at construction but I can understand that. The little that I know. When you're about to build something, you have to make it straight, flatten. You don't want to build on top of a, a re, an irregular terrain. So that man thought that the, the stone was bad, and so he was trying to destroy it, to make the rock to turn into gravel. But an engineer came, approached, and took him from his position and elevated him so he can see. He took him onto, onto a construction elevator and he elevated him to see from outside. So the engineers start to show him all the benefits of this rock being there as a foundation of his, his construction. So the engineer helped him to redo the blueprint Even though he already had that, the man, but he listened to the engineer. So when the engineer showed him the benefits, he, he saw how important it was to have that rock. So after redone the blueprint, he understands, he understood that 
the base, the foundation for his house, of his dreams, is the rock. Is the, 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 the cornerstone. Bread. As many are struggling, we also have ours. But the, what makes the difference is the servant of the Lord in this moment has his life based on the cornerstone. We are here tonight, and I believe many here have several excuses not to be here. But we came, we put our life before the Lord, because we know that what the Lord has for us is better than everything else. So Peter answered the last verse that we read. How can we stop talking about what we have heard and seen? What have you seen? What have you heard? What did Peter was talking about? What Peter have heard back then? Peter saw Jesus resurrected. Why many thought that Jesus died and everything was finished. Peter understood that that was just the beginning because he saw Jesus resurrected. Brethren, in this moment, besides our life is founded on the rock, we understand that we cannot stop from telling, from announcing what we have heard and listened and we have experienced. What the does the church has experienced? Because we have all the the signs that Jesus is alive. You are listening, you are watching tonight. Why? Because we know that here, we hear the voice of God. Nobody will waste our time as a social encounter. But we came because here God speaks. We have answer of prayers. The, the cornerstone is among us in the middle of the people of God. We understand that our life is based in this cornerstone, Jesus. And I say again, we all have our dreams, our plans. I want my, my son, my daughter to go there, here. And brethren, if our lives is based on the rock, not on like pebbles or gravels, because all over the world what have abundantly around the world is fragments of rock. It's gravel here, gravel there. But the the gravels they have no no strength to sustain anything. But we know the rock, the solid rock. Something that many are despising. So the decision is personal, nobody's forcing anybody. Nobody will make anybody make a decision. But what we have is a Jesus that is alive, that died, but he rose again, and he is capable to give us peace. We understand this only when we know that Jesus, as Peter mentioned, Jesus Christ that went to the cross, and that was not the end. It was just the beginning. He is still alive, and He is talking to us, to the faithful church tonight. Brethren, this is the word of God for, for us tonight. The cornerstone that was rejected for many. You are listening to this gift. If you are this man, you have your plans. Do not destroy the rock. Do not think that the rock is useless, because the rock is the, the base of your family. How many things have happened around the world. So many incidents that the world is trying to imprint on us. But only if we are based on the rock, we can conquer and we can resist. The servant that has the life on the rock is a conqueror. That's why tonight 
the Lord says that I shouldn't mention all the struggles and the, the trials that we are facing because we know all that. But what we're here to say is the benefits. Peter said, as you have seen the benefits of this man being healed, what is the benefit that God has given to your life? Look at the benefits that that God has given you, my sister, in your family. You are going to struggle. That's okay. It's part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But if you are firm on the rock, Jesus might come after the service. Now, tomorrow, you're going to heaven. And this is enough for you to glorify the name of the Lord. Only this is enough, enough to finish the service and go home rejoicing because we have an assurance in our hearts. If Jesus comes, we're going to heaven. Put your life on the rock. If Is there anything that is not on the rock? Lord, put on the rock for me. I surrender, Lord. Because the Lord will never fail. We're going to sing a song. We're going to glorify the name of the Lord. And you're going to be grateful for all the benefits of this name. As Peter said, in any other there will be salvation. Because underneath the, the earth or on top of the earth, there is no name that we should be saved.
the church lives the hope. We used to be lost in the world, entrapped by the sin. But one day Jesus has called us, and He has healed us. As He cured this man long ago, the same Jesus, He has rescued us, and He has. He has not put us on top of some gravels, but He put us on top of the cornerstone, a life rock, living rock. The trials and struggles will keep going, but the, 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 the end of this song is our hope. We live under this hope that one day we're going to see Him face to face in heaven. And this hope is not an if, but it's a, an assurance. It will happen. I invite the church to stand. And the Lord has shown as well. <clears throat> this song talks about to harvest the fruits. And I'll read the, the vision literally. It talks about a woman that used to every day opened the, the window of his house, her house, and she used to watch the workers in plantation harvesting wheat. And that brought some joy. She likes to watch and enjoy seeing them. But she asked herself, how could I be part of this group and be part of this work? At that moment, was the only part of the day that she feels joy in her heart. As she opened the window, the, the light, the sunlight entered in the room, and I was discussing before the service, and when we discern the gift, we understand that before our reasonable eyes, I never worked in plantation, but I believe so that it's not easy to work under the sun it's a heavy heavy duty and that woman was feeling so well watching that she desired to to work many will not understand what is to serve the lord many call us crazy they make fun and they mock us they don't understand why how come we, s we can serve this God? It's not easy. It's like harvesting wheat. But even though they don't understand, but they see in us something that they don't see in themselves. They see something that is called the joy. And it's not a regular joy or temporary joy. But they see in us a peace. They see our family structured, well established. And this makes the, the people around us to feel good to watch this so someday they will ask how can I be part of that there is a song that from the children that talks about that and in Timothy when Paul wrote to Timothy says the worker is the first one to to, to absorb the, the result to enjoy the fruits for us it might look heavy but we are the first one to be blessed one of the brothers on before the service used, we are in, uh, interested in the and God is not worried about that. Even though we come knowing that we're going to receive something, He is pleased to bless us. And even though we come needing something, you came to the right place, to the right spot, to the presence of God. Is it is it difficult to serve? Yes, it is. But the reward is humongous. And when you work for the Lord, you are the first one to harvest. Let's have a word of praise. As for truly to serve the Lord, even though it's, it has the, stri the trials and struggles, but it's a pleasure to serve this God. Lord, we bless you because it's a great privilege to be in the presence, to serve you. And to have our ways, our path, our life before you. 
We praise you for all the, the deeds that you have done for us. Blessed be your name forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we praise you for this service, for your presence among us. How good it is to start the week at your feet, O oh Lord, to be able to adore you, to have this place opened, and so we can, with our hearts, offer our gratitude for great things that you have done for us. We praise you, we adore you. As for you, how you are our God. You live among us, and you have sustained our families. You have blessed our lives all the time. We praise you because even though we don't deserve, we are not worthy. But because of your love, unconditional love, you have sent your Son to rescue us, to save us. And now we are here, full of gratitude. Blessed be your name. We are eternally grateful. And now we ask you that you can receive this service in heaven. And you can revert in blessings for every one of us. Give us a, a week of blessings with experiences with you to be closer to you. Receive and bless us. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. We are about to close the service. The brethren that, has, that are watching us through Zoom, we have some workers and deacons ready to help you, to pray for you. And here as well, we are ready for, to assist anyone that need it. We are here to pray and to help you. After the assistance, we're going to have a brief meeting with a group letter B from the church. So we put ourselves at your service to pray for you, to talk to you. This week is the noon prayer in favor of the ministries, the families, their personal lives, and their ministry. To all peace of the Lord Jesus Christ.